What's up, guys? We're here to talk about wood guns. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes wood. It's a dead tree carcass. Carbon fiber is the epitome of materials and composites, and it's really just like outclasses everything completely. What's up guys, I'm Jared from Florida Freedivers and I'm here with Eric today to talk to you about rail guns versus wood guns. Well, we're actually here to talk about real guns versus pretend play toys that look nice. <laughs> so, as you can tell, I'm more preferred to a wood gun, a more, uh, you know, looking better, kind of more professional, taking care of gun versus mm -hmm. Eric with these... Uh, these look like toy guns to me. That's all right. I mean, some may call it a hack job. I call it a professional tool. Um, but it is. It's, it's an age-old debate, man, for spearfishing. It's like Ford versus Chevy. You know, we got Hawaiian sling versus pole spears. If you start getting more towards the spearfishing side of things. And then when it comes to guns, man, it's basically rail guns versus wood guns. Um, and when I say rail guns specifically, I mean, they make them in a bunch of different materials. Aluminum, um, carbon fiber, like the one up here. Um, but there's a bunch of different stuff you can get out there, but there's two very distinct different styles of gun, yep. where your rail guns are generally considered to be a little bit more modular. Um, you know, you have like your plastic handles and stuff like that, and your wood guns are the very sleek, refined Ferrari of the ocean, <laughs> generally. I've seen some hack job wood guns, but... <laughs> yeah, I definitely have. Uh -huh. There's definitely some better than others, but... Why don't you run through, I guess, some of the benefits of what you like with the rail guns, and then sure. I'll touch on what I like with the wood guns. Cool. So there's obviously pros and cons to both. Um, starting with the rail guns, the main pro is going to be cost, right? So a lot of the wood guns generally tend to be custom made. There's there's are a lot of off the shelf um, big name brand guns out there, which we'll you know we'll touch on a couple, and we've got the ones up here to show you. But cost on rail guns is going to be way less than most wood guns. Generally speaking, there are exceptions to the rule, such as probably what I have here in front of us, um, which is one of my personal guns that I run. So right off the bat, when I think rail gun, you know, our, our particular area, we're kind of founded on Rob Allen spear guns. It's just what's been around. That's what I grew up shooting. Um, all my friends got me into shooting Rob Allens, and that's what we've always had. So... When I think railgun, I think Rob Allen, and I think they're a perfect example of like probably the epitome of the railgun. Yeah. You know, they're very basic for what it is. You can get a pretty simple off the shelf uh, model. So, this is the Rob Allen Tuna, which is one of the more popular guns that we sell in the shop. A lot of that has to do with everybody here shoots Rob Allen, so we, we definitely tend to maybe have a little bias towards them. Everyone except me. Eh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> But this guy is, just to kind of run through some of the features that you're going to find on a typical rail gun, you have usually an aluminum barrel, so in between your handle and your muzzle here. This barrel section is all aluminum, it's extruded, so it's kind of the same shape all the way through. It's basically a pipe, um, but the thing that makes it a rail gun is it does have a track built into the top that the shaft sits into. It helps guide and support that shaft on the whole length of the gun. And typically you're going to have a fairly basic um, plastic muzzle on the front, or if you're kind of a nerd like me, it's glass-filled nylon. Um, so I don't know what Rob Allen uses, maybe a 50, 60% glass fill. Nobody cares. I'm the only <laughs> one that cares. Um, on the back, you're gonna find some sort of plastic handle as well. So same deal, they're glass-reinforced uh, nylon, so they're, they're a little stronger than just your generic plastic. Um, what's nice about them, like I said, the cost gets cut down because you're mass producing just a single plastic unit. And the modularity is really what I like about it. So I can take, I can basically put this hand, gun in the hands of any beginner spear fisherman in a very short length. And as they progress through spear fishing, they can adapt that gun to whatever the scenario that they're getting into. So as they grow, they can change that gun to fit them. Um, so for example, somebody starts with something like this, they have the base features that they need. They've got this handle and they've got this muzzle. From there, in the future, they can upgrade to a longer barrel. So like, for example, this is 110 centimeter. You can upgrade to a 120 centimeter barrel, such as this one. You can upgrade to a carbon fiber barrel. It is pretty. Who doesn't like carbon? It is pretty. 
Mm. Maybe on the camera it's hard to see, but the carbon fiber always looks sick. Everybody likes that. Um, on this particular one, I don't know if it's in frame, but I have a custom um, trigger mechanism installed in it. So kind of the the options are limitless as far as how you want to modify these things. And there, there are some limits as far as brands go. It's one of the reasons I do like Rob Allen is there's so much aftermarket support for him as well. Um, you can upgrade them to roller muzzles, so you can change all kinds of different power features on them, how the gun works. You can change pretty much everything about the gun um, to suit your needs. I, I like to consider these the AR-15 for anybody who's into firearms. The AR-15 and spear guns, just because you can build it to exactly how you want it for the purpose that you're using it for. Um, so, I guess that's a little bit of a long-winded answer to what I like about rail guns. But generally speaking, just to kind of touch on some of the cons. They are louder. A lot of people talk about that. Personally, it doesn't bother me. Um, the noise isn't a huge factor. I don't run clips or anything, so there's nothing to bang against the barrel. Um, they don't handle recoil nearly as well. Um, and I don't want to get into too many of the pros of those wood guns that you call cool. But uh, I'll let you go ahead and touch on some of that stuff. So before <laughs> we actually start on the wood guns, you shared a story with me the other day about you doing this? Uh, well, here, let's say anything before today, I don't hold accountable. What was more accurate? I'm not going to be accountable for it. <laughs> no, but what was more accurate in the test that you did? <laughs> was, it a, was it a wood gun? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I think it might have been a wood gun that was a little bit more accurate than all the other <laughs> ones out there. So to touch on some of the wood guns, let's just move this out of the way real quick here. Yeah, put it right up in front where it we're, belongs. We're, we're, we're going to move this out of the way just so no one can see it. <laughs> so, touch on some of the guns. One of my favorite is definitely a Koa, um, Koa Spear Guns. He's local here, right around our shop here in Florida Free Divers in uh, North Palm Beach. Um, the things that I really like about them is that they used a... Easy there. Easy. I don't want to scratch this beauty. <laughs> right. Is that they use a actual poor graphite track. So. The consistency of the accuracy for me is really important to make sure that I'm lining up exactly where I want to shoot the every time. It's funny that you do the AR-15, you know, kind of comparison. I'm a huge Eugene Stoner fan, AR-15, if you guys don't know what that is. Um, but I, I also... Know who knows who Eugene is. Yeah, uh, that, that's, just, that's the same. They got to look it up. They got to look <laughs> it up. So same kind of comparison. It's, it's definitely modular. You can put a real gun, on, a real on it to make it a real gun. You can throw it into make it a float gun. Um, you can throw different grips on and especially with the Koas. Uh, I am definitely a more of a fan of the enclosed track wood gun than of an open track style. But that's not to say that some of the open track styles are not great to also use. That, um, that's a whole other debate on its own. Yeah, like, definitely. Open definitely versus is. closed tracks. De definitely is. But and, and why the open track so much better? I think some of them, though, with the neutral buoyancy that you can actually utilize when the shaft is out, is is pretty advantageous for you know if you shoot the fish, all of a sudden your gun's not sinking; it's kind of floating right behind you, not going up, not going down. Um, so it kind of stays right with you, especially in that free dive capability. If to say that too, though, I mean, I think that with using a wood gun for so long, if I was to use a real gun, I would probably go towards a, you know, carbon fiber, Rob Allen. I've used them before. Uh, I am a fan of using them when I do use them. I am just a bigger fan of using the wood guns overall. Um, something I like about the Koas are, you know, they are all already enclosed, polished. So... You don't really have to polish them or anything like the unfinished wood. Uh, and they are some of the best products you can get out locally made here. Um, the Omeras are, are great wood guns as well. And they have a whole different line of uh, different wood capabilities that are out there. Come in the shop, we have a, a wide array of variety for you guys to check out. But with that being said, though, too, I mean, I, I do like the real guns a lot. And I have to kind of try to give them a second try, unfortunately. Sorry, man. I'm we'll judge if you want to stick with something inferior. You said inferior, yeah. Well, I'll try your gun next time. I'm with the inferior. There we go. Yeah. Um, but to be fair, I, one of the first guns I ever bought for myself was a wood gun. I had a right hero. And wood guns do have some very clear advantages. Um, like you said, the, the weighting and the basically the balance of the gun underwater is pretty much, you can't even compare it to a rail gun. Um, wood guns are so much more evenly 
ballasted. And it depends on the maker, I will say that, especially as you get into custom guns. Like the Koa guns are very, very well ballasted um, and neutrally buoyant, and it, particularly with the shot in the gun, right? So I even own a wood gun, which I, str I struggle to really? say. Oh, it just breaks my heart. But it is one of my favorite guns, and um, it's a very well-made Italian Ferrari of the ocean. <laughs> the truth comes out. It's a Seawolf um, wood roller gun. And it's the level of balance that that thing achieves in the water. You can't even come close to in a real gun. So that kind of like precision and maneuverability that you get from a perfectly weighted gun in the water is, is pretty hard to beat. Um, so that being said, if I, if I had to pick a wood gun off the shelf here from Florida Freedivers, um, I would probably pick this Omer Orion just because it incorporates a lot of the features that I really love about a railgun, such as a very low shaft axis where the shaft sits very low into the grip of the gun. You can see how thin the profile of this gun is. Um, that's some of the things I enjoy about railguns and some of the features I like to look for in, in wood guns as well. So if I had to pick one, it'd be this guy. I'm a big fan. That's I a good looking thing. It looks like it's very well balanced too. Like it would go through the water and plane through really nice. Yeah, man. Especially with the side kind of paddle that it has. So it is the age old debate, but yeah. for me, I'm sticking with my Rob Allens. Um, not to say that I don't enjoy shooting other stuff as well. You know, there's always good banter to go back and forth between them, but uh they all they all shoot fish at the end of the day. Yeah, I'll stick with my colours, but I guess I'll give them a try every once in a while. But who won that contest by the way? What what contest? The contest you were talking about with the wood gun one. I, don't, I actually don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, stay tuned for what's coming up here next. Uh, stop by the shop. Any of the guns that you want to check out, we'll definitely help you out with. And like we said, you know, we have a wide variety of the guns here. Ask for any of the staff members. They can point you in the right direction. Thanks for uh, tuning in. And talk to you later. Yeah. We'll see you in the next one. Before we go, let us know down in the comments which one of these guns you prefer. You shoot wood guns? You shoot carbon guns? Rail guns? What you got? Let us know. See you guys. <laughs>